Hey guys, welcome back to Wix Fix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you about pro galleries. Now, if you've used the Wix before, you probably know what pro galleries are. However, you may not have ever used them. And in today's video, I'm not only gonna show you how to add them and set them up, but I'm also gonna show you some pro ways to use them. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I wanna do is show you the customization options that the pro galleries has to offer. So first, let's go ahead and add it. So we're gonna come up to this add button go to gallery and you're gonna see a tab right here for pro galleries. Now in here, you're gonna see a bunch of pre-made templates that you can choose from for the pro gallery. But for this example, let's just go ahead and pull out the grid. Now it's gonna add this grid template for the pro gallery to our website. And the first thing you're gonna notice is there is a manage media, a settings and a stretch icon. If we click the stretch icon, we can stretch it to the full width of the screen similar to what we can kind of do with strips a little bit. And then once we stretch it to the full width of the screen, you're gonna notice that we have an option to set margins. Now for the margins, we can set it to pixels or we can set it to percentages. But for now, let's just go ahead and add 80 pixels of margin. And basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna bring the website in on the left and the right. That way it's not completely stuck from edge of the screen on the left and right. So let's go ahead and just add 80 pixels of margin, just like that. And now that we are done with the stretch, now let's go ahead and go into the settings. Now, if you've used the Wix for a while, you, you're probably really familiar with one of these boxes. And here you can click on these tabs and you can manage or design it however you see fit. If we click layout, you're gonna notice that there is a bunch of layouts for us to choose from. And there's also a secondary tab for presets which if we scroll through here, we're gonna notice a lot of cool options that we can use if we choose. But for now, we're just gonna leave it as the grid layout for now. And we're also gonna have an option down here to customize layout. Here we can change the scroll direction from vertical to horizontal. So that way, when the user is on the screen, when the user sees the screen, they can scroll to the right and go this way. But personally, I still like the vertical one, so we're just gonna leave it as that for now. The thumbnail size is currently set to crop. However, we can also do fit. So what fit does is basically, depending on the orientation of the image, if you're on crop, it's basically gonna fill the entire grid item. But if we do fit, it's gonna completely show the full image, but it's gonna show like a bunch of empty space that the item has without the image. Now I can see this being useful in some cases, but personally for most cases, I would just leave it as crop because I do believe that looks a lot nicer. Below that, we can also set the image ratio. So we can do 16 by nine, which this is perfect if you have like a video because videos are typically 16 by nine. We can do four by three, we can do one by one, we can do three by four and nine by 16. Now, unless you have a video, I would probably recommend doing four by three or one by one. I do believe those look a lot nicer, but your project might be different. So choose your ratio accordingly. Below that we have design settings. So we can fit to screen or we can have a set items per row. The set items per row, we can actually manage right here. So if I want four items on this row, you're gonna see that the grid automatically adjusts to fit four items on the row. Below that, we can also set the spacing. So currently set the 10, but let's just do something crazy like 60. And you'll be able to see that it added more spacing between the items. And I think this looks really good. And before we move on, I do wanna show you what fit the screen does. Basically what this does is it just automatically fills the screen with the items. You're gonna notice that right here, the number of items per row got replaced by thumbnail size. So if we lower the thumbnail size, you're gonna notice that it's now gonna have four items per row. One reason I do like that option is because we can actually resize the screen and it's gonna automatically change the number of items on the row. However, if we go set items per row and make sure it's set to four, then when we press preview, you're gonna notice that the items just get smaller, which this still looks really good and it just kind of depends on what you're looking to do. But just know that the pro galleries is responsive. So whether that's a set item per row and each item gets smaller as the screen gets smaller, or you can have it set to fit the screen automatically, it'll try to keep the items the same size on all breakpoints. And last but not least, we also have a load more option. So as you can see here, let's say you have a ton of items in your 
pro gallery and you don't want the gallery to take up the entire page. This load more button has two functions. It can load the rest of the images in the pro gallery, or you can have one more section appear. But in most cases, you'll just want to do all images. But now we are done with the layout. Now we can go ahead and jump over to settings. And here, what we can do is set the click function. So we can have it open in expand mode, which basically would look like this. It would just open up basically a light box with some more information. And in some cases, it can have a shop, you can like it, or you can look at the image by itself. Another option is a link opens. Now here, you can actually tell the link where to go. So if we go to manage media, and we look, click on this image, you're gonna see that there is an option for a link down here. And that's exactly what the link open would do. Another option is nothing happens. And then the fourth option is open in full screen, which is similar to the light box that we just saw. Below that is social settings. Here you can allow your users to actually download the photos or videos in the pro gallery. There's also an option for social sharing so they can share it on their Facebook or any other social media platform. And then there's also this heart icon. Typically what I use this for does not require any interactivity in a social media sense. So I typically just turn off the heart icon. But if you do want it, you can show it with a counter. So it, if there's like 100 people that like the photo, it'll show the amount of people that liked it. Or you can show it without the counter. So only you'll be able to see the number of people that like it. Let's go ahead and jump over to the design. Here we can actually set the overlay. So once we click on that, it's gonna go at enter hover mode, which we can do a full overlay, a partial overlay. And we can set this to percentage or pixels. So if we change the size, you're gonna see something like this. So if you have some text and you don't want this overlay taking up the full image, that's what you can do. However, let's just set it to full overlay. Here we can actually change the overlay to a gradient, which of course you can change the color opacity of color one, the color and opacity of color number two, the gradient direction, and last but not least, this little heart icon, you can also change the color of that as well, but we're just gonna leave it as white. Below that is the overlay effect. So basically as of right now with no effect, as soon as we hover, it's just going to appear. It's not gonna do some gradual animation, it's just going to pop in. Typically what I would do is just do fade in. I believe this is probably the cleanest look. So when I hover over different items, you know that overlay just kind of fades in really clean. But once we're done with overlay and icons, we can come over to text. Here we have two options. We can enable the title and we can enable the description, which I will show you in just a minute where you can change that. But here we can actually position the information wherever we want. We can have it under the image similar to that. We can have it above or we can have it on the image itself. Now by default, it's already on this one, but you can easily change that right here. I personally really like the underneath. It kind of makes it feel more like a repeater, but then below that we can actually change the styling. So of course here we can change the fonts and the size, and we can obviously change the color. Same with the description. And then we can also adjust the horizontal alignment. So we can have it, so as of right now, it's aligned to the left, but we can do center and right if we choose. For now, I'm just gonna leave it in the middle. Then below that, we have adjust text box size, and it's automatically set to automatic, which really helps when it's trying to be responsive. But if you wanted to, you can easily just switch it over to manual and change the box size. But for now, let's just leave it as automatic. And we can also change the vertical padding for the text, which this basically controls how much space is on the top and bottom of this description and title. And I think this area looks really nice. And then below text horizontal padding, there's also space between the title and description. So what we can do is just bump that up a little bit if we want a little bit more space. And then if we go back up to text horizontal padding, um, just like the padding we had before, it's just going to bring in padding from the side of the item, which we don't have enough text here for it to really matter, but let's say we had a long title or a long description, basically bringing this in would make the text wrap. Now that we're done with text, we can actually go to the button. 
Now, what we can do is add a button, which if we do, if we use that, you're gonna notice a click here button. And of course we can change the button text, the alignment, the color and fonts, the background color, the border, the corner radius. And then we can also change the load more button down here. And once again, we can change the text, the font, the button color, the border and the corner radius. But for now, I'm just gonna turn off that button and go back. Below buttons is item styling. Now, currently what we have is this one right here, but, I, but if we click this one, you're gonna notice that it kind of made the whole item one box, which looks really cool. And then this one right here kind of separates the two a little bit more and makes it still feel part of the same item, but with a little bit of space. My personal favorite is probably this one or this one right here. For now, let's go ahead and leave it like this one right here because I do wanna show you that we can actually add a border around the items if we want. And we can also change the corner radius. So we can actually have this be basically a circle or we can add just a little bit of a radius to kind of have a nice rounded edges so they're not so sharp. Below that, we actually have the option to add a shadow, which I personally do, really do like this option. And of course, we can change the color, the blur, the direction, shadow size, and this, basically the shadow settings are the same for any other thing in the Wix editor that you would add a shadow to. Below that is the hover effect. When the user hovers over the image, maybe we want the image to zoom in or blur. These are typically my favorite things to choose. Um, since we already have that overlay appearing, I do typically like to do the overlay or the zoom in. So if I preview the site, you're gonna notice that the image kind of zooms in when we hover over the image. And because we already have the text down here in its own little box, I honestly feel like we can actually just turn off the overlay. We actually don't really need it at all. So I'm just gonna come over to this overlay color and turn this down to zero because we obviously don't really need it because the text isn't appearing over the image. But now that we're done with the item style, we can go ahead and go to scroll animations, which this one is exactly how it sounds. So if we go ahead and turn off the load more button, we're gonna see that we have a lot of images and sometimes they don't load when you load up the website page. So they slowly load as the user scrolls down. So typically I like to do the swipe up one, the swipe up animation. That way, if I preview the site, and we start scrolling down, you're gonna notice that the images are slowly kind of coming up and it looks really clean. And once we're done with the design, we can come over to the advanced tab right here. We have the option to change the image quality. If you want it to be 100%, you can do that, but I do believe 90% or below is recommended. We can also turn on image sharpening if you feel like it. However, that's really not that necessary for a lot of cases. So we can just go ahead and leave that turned off. And then we have video settings. What you can do is have them play automatically on click or on hover. You can play them with sound or leave the sound off. Playback speed, you can change, you can loop the video and show play button. And down below that, we can actually have the gallery direction from left to right and right to left, which it really doesn't make that big of a difference unless you have a specific order that you're trying to do. And then below that, we have Lightroom integration. So basically, if you are a photographer that uses Photoshop or Lightroom, here we can actually integrate Lightroom into Wix and you'll be able to upload and manage your Wix website gallery through Lightroom. Now that we are done setting up the Pro Gallery in all of its settings, now I do wanna show you a professional use case for it. So for fun, let's go ahead and add a database to our site. For this one, we're just going to choose the team template. And we're just gonna add that to our site real quick. Great, so now that we have that database set up, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and add a data set to our page. I'm gonna go into the settings and connect this to our team database. And I'm also gonna come down to sort and make sure that the order is set low to high. Now what I wanna do is click this pro gallery. I'm gonna do connect to data and we're gonna choose the team data set. Now basically what this is going to allow us to do 
is make the images connect to the photos in the database. We can have the titles connect to the names in the database. The descriptions connect to the job titles. And we can have the link open up a dynamic page. So basically what this is doing is in a way it is completely removing the need for repeaters. So not only is it quicker and easier to set up than a custom repeater, but it's also responsive. So if I move this down, you're gonna see that all of the images, the text included are all resizing. And again, this is a setting that we can change right from the pro gallery settings. So if we choose fit to screen and change the thumbnail size to something kind of large, now what we can do is have something a little bit bigger, but it's going to resize the screen. It's gonna resize everything and be responsive and it looks really, really, really clean. So in a way, this is kind of taking the place of the need for a repeater, which is something that I really do like because repeaters take a while to set up properly. And recently they've been a little buggy. So this is a fantastic way for professionals and people that aren't familiar with setting up custom repeaters to create this effect right inside the Wix editor. But this basically wraps it up for the video today, guys. If you guys did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and consider subscribing for more Wix content coming out really soon. Thank you all again, and I'll see you on the next one.